we ended up with this, with the uh, wing nunchuck, and we, 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 we started from the ground up, we made a schematic, you know, came up with all the designs, you know, function diagrams, all that fun stuff, and then laid out the PCBs ourselves and built it, and here we are today with this. We actually, this is our prototype, this is what we started with, a breadboard full of wires, you can't really tell what's going on, but that's one section of this. There's actually nine sections, if you come up and look later, I suppose you can look at it. There's nine little squares and they all talk to each other, they all have uh, their own power source and a data ribbon going between them. And there's one microcontroller, one board has a microcontroller on it, and uh, that reads the Wii input. We have some different fun functions. Um, we have some just fun animations that, you know, just static, they don't really change or anything. But then, uh, we do get a little more fun with the Wiimote and have like some interactive kind of things. I can read the accelerometers off the Wiimote. So if I twist it, it goes blue. If I tilt it this way, it's green. If I use the joystick, it's red. Do some fun stuff like that. Um, then, we have, uh, let's see, where is it? This is, uh, this is Will's creation here. We have a snake game where I can select my difficulty and drive around and eat the snake food, just our classic, you know, I think everybody's probably played snake on their phone or maybe on a flash game or something. But so I'll just go ahead and crash here and it'll show me my score. Three. But uh, that's, that's what we have right now. Um, Oh, there, we don't have an audio source here today. Well, we kind of do with laptops, I suppose, but we've, we've got some uh, some fun issues with that right now. We, I actually broke the audio jack off uh, the PCB board. It stuck off the side here, and I set the board on the desk. And, so that's out of commission, but it does react to music. We have some different things. It'll, like, it'll filter out bass notes and high notes and mid notes, and just there's some different e fun equalizer-like programs that display on the board. I wish I could show you, but I can't right now. As far as the future of this goes, I, we actually have some software engineers on our team too, and they're writing a Java program that will run on a PC. And the whole idea is that somebody who doesn't have an engineering background could sit down and type in text that would appear on the screen or create their own you know, animations, flashes, or whatever on the computer and then upload those to the board. So that's, that's, that's kind of the future with this, and as well as finishing up some of the bugs we've got and maybe a new snake game or something. That's about, yeah, the possibilities are endless. So. Tetris. Tetris. Tetris maybe. They keep telling me I need to do Tetris, so we'll see. So. That's one other thing you need to, you need to know about it is, uh, since it is the nine, nine modules or whatever, you can expand it to whatever length you put on. You can just add another uh, another stack of three modules or something, and then you can just change a couple numbers, and all the programs will uh, will expand to whatever size uh, you give the you tell the, that the board is. So yeah, look at that scoreboard, right? Yeah, this is this is similar to what the like scoreboards at like Hilton or Jack Trice would look like if you got up close enough to them. However. They're a little bigger, I guess. Spacing's a little bit tighter. Yeah, spacing's a little bit tighter for the pixels, but it's not it's not a lot different. It's really very similar, so. It's cool stuff. So yeah, we've got, like, a, like John kind of said, we've got the EEs with the circuit design and the actual PCB layout. We've got the computer EEs writing firmware on the micro that runs the display. And then we've also got software EEs. Yeah, software EEs writing the Java applet that will run on the PC and communicate back and forth, so. so yeah, that, that's, that's one of the cooler projects, really flashy, you know, like lights blinking and stuff. I feel like that's it's really fun. We're, we're starting to um, work on a party button, so anytime you come in the room, you can party button. It's not going to be like strobe lights. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm going to show you, Matt's got this really sweet thing that you guys could probably, who has an iPhone here? Anybody have iPhones? Right, good. Like only two of you. Uh, but, <laughs> but anyway, there's this really sweet app that uh, they found, that Matt found, he's going to tell you all about it. And it connects to Wi-Fi and connects to his computer and that's some really sweet stuff. Thank so you. I'm going to show right. it up there. Uh, uh, show both. No, I know uh, I can't, but it's just a matter of getting it. Um, so what's up guys? Um,
kind of what I'm about to show you is just something that I kind of stumbled upon that I wanted to start messing with. Um, I just recently got this iPhone. I was like, okay, there's got to be a way that I can mess with this to uh, kind of make it a little bit cooler. So uh, actually what I'm going to show you now is my iPhone itself. Uh, so what this is, is um, it's actually a program called uh, uh, OSC, Touch OSC. And actually what it's made for is um, music editing. So you're actually supposed to hook it up to like a MIDI device or something like that. And you're supposed to be able to kind of control uh, like making music that way. But uh, I researched a little bit and I found out that you can actually tap into that and modify it so you can control it through uh, kind of whatever you want. So uh, I use this program called Processing, which I was going to show you, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to work too well. Um, but actually what it's doing is, like right here, I developed this uh, interface where I can uh, send data from the iPhone to my laptop wirelessly over the Wi-Fi network that's built in here. Um, and I can use that data that's being transmitted from the iPhone to whatever I want it to be. So this instance here is a uh, motor controller that is um, supposed to control just two individual motors um, with eight LEDs on there. So that's what the squares are. And uh, so I'll show you now kind of just what's going on. So when we have a like power going to the motor, um, the green LEDs turn on for um, kind of that means that it's moving, something like that. Um, and then for, as you can see on motor two throttle, it's at 40%. And then as it changes, you can just go away to 100%. So, and then same with that one. So it just depends, uh, I guess, on whichever motor you're using. But when both go down, that indicates that the motors are off. Uh, so, um, it should. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna try and uh, show you what's going on, on my laptop now, maybe, if it works. Um, okay, there we go. So, awesome. so okay, so what this is, um, is actually, that's the code behind it. That's just a little smidgen of it. So, um, it's actually extremely simple. It's just very repetitive for uh, all the different instances that you go through. Um, but, okay, so, like, I'm going to take this off here. So, as I move my finger across here, just for throttle, it also changes on here. So, as the value changes, uh, that one does too. So, and then there's both throttles, uh, LED, uh, I guess I put that <coughs> three turned on, and then eight. Da, 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 da. So, that kind of thing is going on. Uh, so, so kind of for some... What, yeah, I was going to say, what are you, you going to use this for too? Here? Um, so, kind of a future project uh, that me and Nathan here want to do is a uh, Segway kind of miniaturized robot that uh, will auto-balance itself. Um, and then kind of after that, we want to be able to control it with this. So like if we want to go forward, just move both motors forward, and hopefully that'll be able to go forward. So and uh, like the implementation of this is almost limitless in a sense, because you can do so much with it. Um, the interface is definitely interchangeable to whatever suits your needs. So uh, and what you're about to see probably a little bit is uh, this scooter down here that uh, we were thinking about using uh, or it being controlled by the iPhone also. So uh, that's just kind of what I've been doing, messing with. So uh, yeah. yeah, and it's really cool. And, uh, like I said about the, th this is going to be kind of the, one of the main controller parts for this next project. This project, this project is kind of our candy project. Uh, we got one of our members as a dad who, uh, he lost his life in the war. But uh, so because of that, he's gone through a lot of uh, powered wheelchairs, and he was kind enough to donate one of his powered wheelchairs to us to uh, tinker with. <laughs> so we tapped into the controller and uh, added kind of our own electronics to it to, to be able to control it right. And I think it's ready. To, Actually, uh, we'll need yeah. a second. Okay, we'll need a second. So we what we did was the same controller that's on this guy here. I'll Look at all these crazy wires and electronics and stuff. But this little blue thing in the corner here, uh, that's the microcontroller that Benny was talking about. And uh, we put one of those things on this wheelchair so we can talk to it through a laptop. So we just type a message 
that we, we program it to like receive and send messages and stuff. So we type in a message, we go forward or go backward. And um, so now, now we can actually control it from a laptop. And if we, I'll show you a video in a second. Can we pull up our CT set? I'm going to show you a video after this demo about how we actually got it to, do, to be wireless. We kind of did what, what uh, Matt was doing and it made this guy connect to the Wi-Fi network and then we also connected to the Wi-Fi network from a, a desktop and we're able to control it wirelessly. It's a little spot running around. It's really cool. Unveil the robot. So this is our this is our newest candy project. If you guys want to come down, you can take a look at it. If you guys want to come down, take some pictures. I don't care. Really. It's got a mind of its own. You guys want to come down? You you can, you can check out the controller and everything. If you want. It's going to be completely wireless eventually. We're, like I said, we, we're going to connect it to the Wi Fi network and be able to control it anywhere. So we don't have to worry about these guys. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, so yeah, you I was going to say, we're connected just through an Ethernet right. port and USB. And right now, the only signal coming from the laptop to it is through the Ethernet port, the USB port solely to power the board. If you put a 9 volt battery on the board itself, you wouldn't even need the USB cable. And then all you'd have to do is put a uh, wireless access point on the bot and it would be completely wireless. And the sweet thing is, like, you know how they advertise, like, oh, uh, ISU campus is Wi-Fi everywhere. Um, so that, that kind of helps us in that uh, we can control it from anywhere on campus. <laughs> and what one of our other members did before he graduated, we hooked it up so that there was a camera actually traveling along on this. And, I mean, you could basically direct it from your computer anywhere in the building that it's in. And, uh, yeah. sorry. This thing has a ridiculous amount of power behind it, so it'll run over anything. And we've had some trouble with that, but you know, that's the fun part about it. <laughs> but that also helps us out because, you know, we basically run it pretty much all day. Yeah. Just one charge. Wherever we want. Wherever we want. It has lots of power for whatever attachments we want on top of it. Kind of our future plan. It's already running. Yeah, here I'll show you this video. Yeah. Uh, we have a we have a fan site, critical thing. So if you want to become a fan on Facebook, you should definitely do it. <laughs> oh, you got me. Okay, okay. So this is the uh, this is the uh, the first run that we did that got, that we made it wireless. Set the speed, you know, go forward this much, turn left, then 
you could write, you know, you could have many different things that go on top of it that control it, you know, that different people are working on at the same time. So. Yeah, so this, it's a lot of fun. Okay, cool. So for this next one, um, this is the kind of the, the, the classic project that EES do as, as either students or just ambitious engineers. So um, I, need, I need a partner the, or, or a volunteer. Anybody? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, we got a brave one. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're at one. Yeah. Yeah. I'd move away all the way. Can you move yourself for a second? Oh. We should see what happens for the See what all this talking about. Yeah, I know. The thing is, got like incredible torque too. If you're in front of it, it will not. It will smash you. Kind of got nicknamed the bone crusher. So <laughs> 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 yeah. Right. Well, this. Awesome cable. Yeah, the cable metal. Okay. So has anybody heard of a Tesla coil or Nikola Tesla? Any yeah, of you guys know? All right. So what? What is it? What? Do you, what is it? It's all you, Nick. It's, uh, Basically, uses high frequency, uh, high voltage AC to really fun stuff with like lightning. Yeah. And and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that, he's absolutely right. It uses very high frequencies. It operates at very, very high frequencies and very, very high voltages at this this half point right here. Um, so, what this device is basically is it creates wireless energy. Um, so, you, you've heard of have you seen those power mats? You know those things that like. You know, those little mats that you can yeah. put a chunk of thing on your phone and it, it'll it'll charge your phone while just putting it on the mat. You hear those? Well, if not, check it out. Power mat. It's really cool. Anyway, it operates off wireless power. And so that was Nikola Tesla's dream when he was, uh, I can't remember, it was like late or mid 1800s. Actually, early 1900s. Excuse me. So, so this was kind of his design. He did a Tesla coil. And so what this does is it creates a huge amount of energy in these um, all these devices down here amplifies it to even larger amounts of energy to at this point right here at this hat point and uh, then discharges it to anything that's nearby so when it's not when nothing's nearby it's actually emanating power um, and you can't feel it but it's actually going through you so it's really cool but if we have something close to it like this metal stick um, it'll do what Nick said it'll, it'll emit a plasma stream uh, Lightning to the stick. It's kind of scary, actually. You should, uh, you should flip it around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, there's a million ways to like make these. And I don't know if you guys can see it down up over there, but there's these two metal uh, uh, tubes down here. Um, what it is, is it's called a spark gap. Uh, the way this thing works is it charges up a lot of energy and discharges it through this spark gap. It charges it, discharges it. It's like a repeating process. And that, what that is, is an oscillator. It creates a really high voltage oscillator. Um, but you can see the oscillator in action when you take a look at that spark. Yet. It's really cool. I have another question. Yeah. Are you worried about your cable at all? It's probably. I ran yeah, my, well, I'm trying to fry my neighbor's show. sound system with it when they're being too loud. Low, low, and it does not Yeah, it, it, it messes crap up sometimes. Like, yeah, my phone doesn't it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the LED board freaks out. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. It'll be fun. Yeah. Alright, so the second I put this in, it's going to go crazy. So I'll have you put this guy a little bit close to you. We'll have it discharge right away. Okay. So good, good three or four inches. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So what we're going to see now is kind of what I talked about, is this, this, this huge yeah. discharge from the this tip of this hat to this point right here, this metal object. And this metal object is grounded. Um, that prevents us from getting shocked super bad. Uh, we didn't know that in the beginning. <laughs> so you can see this, yeah, this, this uh, tape right here is supposed to be an insulator, right? Yeah, it didn't do anything. Well, you, you, yeah, you didn't have the ground. Previously. Yeah, we didn't have the ground previously. So. You'll be okay. We got smart. Yeah, oh, okay. good plan. It actually, actually went to class. And that's why it's a bit loud. Yeah, it's so, a bit loud. Yeah, so, just, just so you don't freak out. There you go. There you go. Three, two, one. Oh, that was 
that was a capacitor. That was, yeah. was it really? Yeah, yeah. that was a capacitor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The first one was a capacitor. <laughs> 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 He's so happy. Oh, right there. See, you can tell this is all a learning experience. <laughs> all <of us. laughs> Even the bad things are good. I don't know. I don't know. That was really cool. So I can't believe it finally happened. And yeah, we miscalculated our, our capacitor design. And so what it's been doing is uh, each time it makes one of those clicky noises, you see those sparks right there? Each time it sparks, the uh, voltage goes way above the rating on the capacitors. Um, so eventually it just kind of like dies out and stops working. Was there a pot in there? Yeah, that was, an, that was a legit arc. Right, well, we'll try that again. Let's see if this works. Alright, ready? Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Oh! Oh! Yeah, that's a re Yeah. Yeah, I already stopped doing that. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so that was our test of quotes. So this is one of the things, the cool double E oriented things that we, we did. Um, it's like we got. See, see. Look at this. It's nice. It's down here. Yeah, yeah, it was on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Well, luckily we made it modular so we can take that whole chunk out and just replace it. Money, money, money. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know. Do we have anything else to show as far as? Oh, uh, but one of the nice things, like uh, I just recently joined this group, and uh, one of the nice parts is even though I'm a double E, like you can see that I've been doing a lot of more, I guess, what you would call computery stuff. So um, I guess it's just a nice way to kind of get the best of both worlds. So I'm just, I'm kind of curious, computeries, doubleies, good now, software, other, <laughs> other, yeah. yeah. What's yeah. the others? What's arrow? Arrow. Nice. No, cool. <laughs> What's yours? Okay. <laughs> What's your major? Uh, double E. Okay. Computer. Cool. Cool. Alright, well yeah, so that this is kind of what we do. Um, again, we're critical thinkers. You can find us on Facebook, uh, you, yeah, know, you yeah. can Google it, and yeah, you Twitter now. Yes, Google critical thinkers. And one thing we don't mention too often because we're focused much on the projects, we actually get to do quite a bit of community service through this. I mean, we were just at a nearby elementary school a few nights ago, you know, getting them actively involved in all this stuff. And, yeah. So there are lots of opportunities for that. <laughs> we do, we do have. There's social we have, we have social nights. Yeah. I'm mean, totally lame. The socials we can be. We go out and eat pizza, and we had Halo night, and talking about doing an office space movie watching night kind of thing. Yes. We do hook up and do homework sometimes too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for oh, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, so that's us. Uh, thanks for coming. We do. If you guys are curious and like don't want to leave yet or have um, nothing to do. We have a. I, I mentioned in the newsletter that we can build a 555 timer circuit today. So it's basically a circuit that blinks a light, but it's really fun. So um, if you're curious, after come up and we can. Or if you have just talk. Yeah, about if, if you have any questions or whatever, and want to kind of, or if you want to see any of the stuff closer. Yeah, we can talk about it or whatever. But um, so so yeah. Feel free to do whatever. Cool. Yeah. I, I won't be too broken-hearted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit.